Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Lori here. Next week, we'll be doing a video on Mexico City. Well, we're at the town called Coyoacan. Yeah, Coyoacan is where Frida Carlo grew up. And uh, we're going to visit her museum today. And it just is sort of uh, a neat experience that we're feeling actually being in her town walking around and maybe she even played in this park here as a little girl and when we look around the neighborhood it's a residential area here we can look at the homes and I don't know it's just sort of an imagination you know what it was like for her growing up. I want to interrupt this little video here we'll get back to Frida's Carlo town and her museum but first I'd like to share with you some thoughts that I've had and a little bit of my feelings, my fears, and some of the stuff that I've gone through in the last couple of years. So here's a little bit I want to share with you. It's going to be two parts. Well, the theme of this uh, series we're doing right now about traveling through Mexico, come with us six months traveling through Mexico and the magical mystery tour of Mexico. We'll be driving through Mexico, we will be covering over 10,000 miles and also visiting over 20 to 30 colonial cities. We invite you to live a life of passion. We are embarking on a new phase of our life. We are now in our 70s and we feel it's so important to have a life of passion, to be passionate about your life, what you do, the excitement you do have in your life, keeping yourself young and vibrant. This is so important, especially as we age. And we encourage you, young or old, to follow your passion, follow your dream, and have that excitement. We invite you to come with us weekly on our journey through Mexico, living a life of passion. Let's do it together. We can do it together as we age in place. And, uh, but I wanna give you some insight on what I was thinking a few months ago, actually actually a couple years ago. Uh, now I'm 77 now, and uh, I really started thinking about it and, and seeing how sure my, you know, uh, time here is at 77 you know so we never know when we're going to be passing but it got me to thinking and then the other thing i started to look at was how healthy are we how healthy am i and pretty healthy and so i uh, was thinking to myself you know as you get older let's say you get in your 80s say 82 you really start to slow down and uh so then I thought, well, you know, these are my best years right now, say 77 to 82 to 85. In other words, before I really start slowing down and uh, how important it is to do things on the bucket list and make sure that uh, I'm living, you know, and choosing things for my life. And Lori is very good about supporting me on this. Uh, she's seven years younger than I am. So I See part two at the end of the video. Now, Frida Carlo, if you don't know, is a famous Mexican artist. Also, she's famously known because she uh, lived and married uh, Diego Rivera, who was a renowned mural artist. And, uh, and they had a relationship. They had a love-hate relationship and so if you get a chance and you don't know Frida Carl, she has a movie out it's a Hollywood movie just says Frida check it out because you'll really get a flavor of her personality she was a feisty type of person and you'll get an idea of you know her tenacity and her passion for life her clothes that she wore very authentic you know Mexican Spanish style clothing, flowers in her hair. She loved primates and the, and the animals. And so uh, 
I invite you to investigate more of Frida Carlo. Behind us there is a church. Maybe this church, the one at Frida, when she was young, she go into. Yeah. We really don't know. We don't know much about her uh, religious outlook and stuff like that. But it makes sense that as a little girl growing as a mother being Catholic and everything, that they would take, the, take her to church here. So again, using our imagination. Okay, we just walked in and uh, we had to book our tickets online. Definitely, you have to do that. If you're even five minutes late, they're gonna close you out. You cannot be late to come in. So it costs us 250 pesos each to come in. And then, well, we have those little tags here, and this was a permit that we could film in here. And so, uh, and that was 30 pesos each. So we each got one of those. So we're gonna, We'll look at the garden area, then we'll step inside and we'll show you what it looks like inside. As we enter Frida's home, the first photograph we'll see is a picture of the original home that she inherited from her mother and father. Later, she painted it the blue. This is a photograph of her mother and father. Now, as you walk from room to room, you'll see a lot of photographs of family members and of Frida. We're gonna enter into Frida's studio, where she painted from her wheelchair. The natural light was a beautiful environment for her. This is her area where she prepared her paints and her colors. We're going to enter Frida's bedroom area here. This is the bed that she laid in and also she did a lot of her painting in. At the top of the bed, in the canopy roof there, there is actually a mirror that was situated so she, this way she could lay in bed and paint. Her father came up with this idea. He was a photographer and he knew how important it was for her to paint and relieve the pain that she went through. And so this is what she did. She painted in bed. She was in a lot of pain and suffered through most of her life. And this is a little girdle harness that she had to wear to support her back. And here she is painting actually the cast itself. Things on the bucket list and make sure that uh, I'm living, you know, and choosing things for my life. And Lori is very good about supporting me on this. Uh, she's seven years younger than I am. So I asked Lori, I says, uh, would you mind if I be selfish? Because the facts of the matter are that historically, the man will go first and then the woman. And so uh, she says, yeah, you know, I support you. I want you to live a good life. and." Uh, and be happy. So uh, I says, can we take this trip through Mexico? And uh, there's some places that I want to see that I uh, haven't gotten able to see. And so she said, sure. So basically, that's what this series is about. Living a life of passion. And yes, it means stepping out of your comfort zone and uh, doing things that maybe you're not comfortable with. But I would rather do that rather than having remorse later in my life to say, oh, gee, I wished I would have went to wherever it was, or I wished I would have done this and that. Uh, now, in our particular case, it's travel. 
uh, or you that are younger, you know, your your urgency isn't as as severe as I'm thinking that it is. Making your bucket list, and you know the thing which is interesting, we live a very very comfortable life here in Mexico, and a lot of times I'll check in with myself and I'll say, you know, I'm really happy. I'm very content. I don't think I've been happier, more content in all my life. And I'll say, well, then why, Jerry, do you want to go travel? Why do you want to, you know, do all these other things when you're content? Well, what I realize is that that's a trap. That's a bit of a trap. Because of that, that is an excuse not to step out of your comfort zone and go do the things that you would like to do. Let's, let's be honest with you. We have one pass at this life. And are we doing what we really want to do and, uh, and choosing that path? These are valuable years. I better make sure my choices are something that I want to do. And uh, so give me your input on that. So uh, my little wrap about my inner thoughts, my inner feelings, <laughs> fears, anxieties, and choices that we make. And Lori and I do communicate on what these choices are. And we have to be in alignment, you know, together that uh, we're doing it. And so she's been very gracious to allow me to have the uh, opportunity to make choices. And we were having lunch the other day and I said, well, we're at a crossroads, you know, we can go to the right or to the left. I says, what do you think? And she says, I'm going to go whatever way you want to go. And so that was quite nice, you know, that she, you know, looks at life that way and giving me the opportunity. So I'm very blessed and I, I hope that you're blessed and I hope that you're living a life of passion. And so, uh, Give me your thoughts.